So you know, honey, I, I, this is our fifth week on the air doing this this dopey Facebook Live show. That is right. And uh, this is all your fault because when the whole damn pandemic started, I'm not blaming you for the pandemic. I just I, I want to clarify that when the whole thing started, you told me do a show every day on Facebook just to stay focused, right? right? right. And I said to you, I said, okay, little switcheroo, I'll do it, but you have to do it with me. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is what our twenty-first show, I think. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Any regrets? <laughs> Not on the air. No. <laughs> uh, you know, I got a shocking announcement to make about oh my God. today. Later on, I'm going to tell the shocking but true story of me and Steven Spielberg. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. So stay tuned for that. But uh, right now, I have a shocking announcement to make about our show. Oh my God. Just want to break right in here, make this shocking, stunning announcement. Uh, you're familiar with uh, uh, Kevin. Of the Not Ready for Dave Koenig players? I think everybody has heard of it. That's our in-house sketch comedy group. Kevin, of course, the uh, young punk comic, young, young, you know, hot shot comic. He thinks he's going to be the big breakout star. So we got uh, Kevin and the Not Ready for Dave Koenig players. And, and you, know, you, know, you remember Gladys, our dance captain. Our dance captain, yes. For the Dave Koenig dancers, Gladys, uh, uh, just a feisty old uh, trooper, right. had her entire skeletal structure uh, surgically removed <laughs> along with her hips and her knees. No reason. For no, yeah, it was elective surgery. She just. <laughs> she just decided to get it done. But uh, 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 shocking announcement, the Dave Koenig dancers and the not ready for Dave Koenig players will not be on the show tonight. Oh, my gosh. They will not appear on this show. That is shocking. I fired them. Oh, man. Fired. That's what I did. What? Well, let me tell you what happened. This, uh, we were having our morning meeting. Yeah. You know, there's a morning meeting where we discuss uh, the elements of the show and what we're going to do. Right. And uh, uh, Kevin, Kevin you know, says, well, he says, well, these are the sketches that, that I have prepared for the show tonight. Okay. And I went, whoa, whoa, you're coming on a little strong there, Kevin. <laughs> and then Gladys says, well, here's, here's the dance we, we're going to do on the show. And I said, whoa, Gladys, what, yeah. whoa, whoa, taking a little initiative, are you? I said, you know what? I said, you don't tell me what's on my show. I tell you what's on my show. I'm the boss here. That's what I said to them. I missed this meeting. Oh, this happened. But this happened. This was our morning meeting. So, uh, 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 and they said, well, you know, we feel we should have some input into our sections of the show. Right. You know. And I said, hey, 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 it's my show. I said, what is this? What is this? Mutiny? Is this mutiny on the bounty? Is that what's going on here? Mutiny on the bounty? And they said, well, what are you talking about, uh, mutiny on I said, this is mutiny on the bounty. That's what I said to them. This is all, by the way, this was all uh, done uh, by Twitter. I was, the meeting was held yeah. on Twitter. We were tweeting back and forth. So I said, uh, hey, 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 mutiny on the bounty, huh? And, uh, uh, and Gladys, Gladys says, well, if, if this is mutiny on the bounty, doesn't that make you Captain Bly? Is that what you're saying? You're saying, like, you're some angry, blowhard psychopath? Is that, what, is that how you're self-describing yourself? And I said, yes, no, I mean, wait a minute. And I got all upset, right? And then Kevin, Kevin says, which uh, mutiny on the bounty are you talking about? Are you talking about the Charles Lawton, uh, uh, Clark Gable mutiny on the bounty? Or the Marlon Brando, Trevor Howard mutiny on the bounty? Because, right. you know, let's, let's get specific here. And I said, what difference does it make? I tweeted back to him. I said, what? All caps, all caps, I tweeted him. <laughs> Okay, I showed him. I tweeted, when, and he says, "Well, certainly, uh, you know, I think uh, for for lush cinematography, we have to go with the remake. But I think that uh, Charles Lawton's original interpretation of the role of Captain Bly uh, has the edge over Trevor Howard." So I said, "That's it. You're fired." Oh man! I didn't. What I didn't actually tweet at them that they were fired. What okay. What I did was because I am a genius. Someone else tweeted hashtag fire Kevin and Gladys, oh. and I retweeted that. Oh, I think that's trending. Yeah, see that way, that way, when 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 they say, hey, hey, what happened here? I can say, well, I, I was just retweeting someone else. I didn't, I didn't know. I, you know, I was just retweeting it. I'm not responsible for the hashtags in someone else's tweet. <laughs> and uh, you know what I call that? Because this is how I run my show. People, because no. some people criticize me for like tweeting at my uh, my staff and just you know yelling at them with the tweets and the. <laughs> but you know what I call? I call that leadership. Okay, that's leadership, and that's how I do my show. Wow. Because I'm the boss around here. Oh, my gosh. That is a really I am the boss. Story. That's right. And I don't work for anybody. I get up. I am my own boss. All right. Okay? okay. It's good to be your own boss. I am my own boss. All right. Problem is, like most Americans, I think my boss is kind of a jerk. <laughs> On my coffee breaks, I'll mutter, that Koenig, what an idiot. He has no idea what he's doing. If only they put me in charge, you know, then things would be different around here, you know? It's a problem with being your own boss. Also, as your own boss, I'm also, I'm also my own employee, and like most Americans, I'm lazy and I hate my job. 
at my monthly employee reviews, I have to say things like, you know, Koenig, your attitude is not good. We're trying to run a business here. I say that to myself because I'm, <laughs> I'm the boss and the employee. Wow. Hey, you know what that means, honey? I think, yeah. <laughs> that means it's time for the Dave Koenig Show yeah. here on Facebook Live with my co-host, the lovely bride of Koenig, seated just a mere six feet social distance from me to my right. Uh, Susan Koenig is here. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Of course, it's Susan Koenig's copyrighted catchphrase. If you go to her website, you can get the full line of Hi, Everybody, Susan Koenig merchandise. As you know, we have, uh, of course, on the website, uh, Susan Koenig, uh, Hi, Everybody, unrefrigerated mayonnaise yes. that she's selling. How much are you selling this for? Um, $800 a jar. Okay. $800 a jar. Right. And then also, if you, uh, if you go on now, the new line of products on the uh, Susan Koenig website, Susan Koenig's own Hi, Everybody, surgical masks. Oh, my gosh. See? We're playing a little fun in the pandemic. Hi, it says, Hi, Everybody, and a little picture of Susan right it's there. It's like my face moves when you talk. Yeah, it's animated. <laughs> and how much are you getting for these on your website? I don't know. $600 each. <laughs> $600 each. I said, honey, that seems a little pricey for, you know, a surgeon. She said, well, you know, supply and demand. I said, whoa. I said, whoa, honey, that sounds like you're profiteering there. Oh, my gosh. That's, what, are you, what are you, all my sons? I... Is that what you are? <laughs> are you all my sons? Oh, my gosh, what a reference. <laughs> it's the only Facebook Live comedy show you're going to get to make an Arthur Miller reference. <laughs> right in the middle of all the dick jokes, we squeeze in an Arthur Miller reference. So you get high culture and low culture all at once. There you go. Uh, so uh, we're doing that. And also, I, I want to plug uh, on Saturday, tune in on Saturday, oh right here, the same way you're watching this, on my Facebook page. And uh, tune in. I'm going to do a, a one-hour-long uh, live uh, stand-up comedy special. That's right. It's an hour of me doing stand-up. Uh, live, it's, it's one man, uh, one hour of comedy, one laptop, no audience. Just, <laughs> like so, a virtual audience. Virtual audience. We'll an have audience a, of one. And gonna, we will have an audience so of one. Have to be yeah, yeah, you got to be here for the whole thing. I might be, I might no, 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 you do not have plans. You're quarantined. You stay right there where I need you. Uh, so uh, we're going to do that. Tune in on Saturday at um, uh, 7 30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here for my live one hour stand up comedy special. We are billing it as a benefit for uh, COVID first responders, and we'll put up a, a website. Uh, you can donate to uh, healthresearch.org. Yes. Healthresearch.org, the official New York State uh, charity that is uh, collecting uh, for, uh, uh, to help out with the expenses of first responders and health uh, workers in the pandemic. And, yeah, we'll have the link up. And we'll have the link up. And then, of course, you know, if you don't want to do that, then donate to the first responders charity of your choice. That's right. It'll be live. And it'll be live. We'll yeah. be doing that live right here on the Facebook page. It's every comedian's dream to get their own one hour comedy stand-up special on HBO or Netflix. And, and Facebook Live. Or Facebook Live yeah. on my Facebook page. So there you go. Uh, we'll be doing that. And, uh, no, we, and because we love the first responders, right? Oh, of course. We're clapping out the window every night. All the health care workers and the, uh, the firemen and police and everyone who's wearing the National Guard who are working so yeah. hard. And you know, even my old unit, the State the, Guard. The New York Guard. The New York Guard. They're out there augmenting and assisting the National Guard. Everybody's doing great. So uh, we respect all that. And we, we're, big, we, we're big fans of the military here in our family. Oh, for sure. Your dad, of course, yep, was Marine. a Marine Corps uh, war hero, your yeah. dad was. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yes, he was. Yeah. He was a war hero in the Korean War. That's right. My father uh, fought in the Korean War as well. Yeah, did he? Not the big famous Korean War. Uh, actually, he fought in a Korean deli. Oh. <laughs> they overcharged him for a bag of fruit, and he got into a big stink. <laughs> but he fought with honor. That's the important thing. <laughs> Actually, they yelled at him, and he ran like a scared little girl. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, uh, oh, that brings us, by the way, to our big guest on the show today. Oh, we have a guest. We have a big guest. Uh, uh, Colonel Shlomo Koenig will be here, my uncle. Oh, really? Colonel Shlomo Koenig, a Marine Corps uh, officer. Yeah. Great Marine Corps officer. A Jewish, Jewish uh, Marine Corps officer. Yeah. My uncle, Shlomo. Uh, you know the difference between a Gentile uh, Marine Corps officer and a, and a Jewish Marine Corps officer. I know. What is it? Gentile officer says, men, take that hill. Jewish officer says, men, take that hill. I'll leave it. <laughs> Why cause problems? <laughs> That's your uncle. This is mutiny. It's mutiny on the bounty. <laughs> you laugh at my jokes or it's mutiny on the bounty. Okay. Uh, aye, aye. Hashtag, hashtag mutiny on the bounty. Aye, aye, Captain. 
Uh, Trevor Howard, by the way, was uh, a lot of people don't know this. Trevor Howard was uh, uh, the older brother of uh, uh, Moe Curley and Shemp Howard, the uh, Three Stooges. Really? Yes. Apparently, uh, uh, Mama Howard, yeah. Mrs. Howard, sat down with the boys mm-hmm. uh, early on. Said, "We can only afford to send one of you to school." Uh, Trevor was the oldest, so they they shipped him off to Cambridge. She oh could afford gosh. to send him to Cambridge. Wow! And he came back, and he said, "Oh, oh hello, lads." <laughs> I see you're doing well with all that poking in the eye stuff. Very good, very good. Tip, tip. See you at Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah, because yeah, they're family. Right. They're family. They got together. Oh my God. So here's the shocking... What a confusing... <laughs> it's a confusing anecdote, isn't it? How much time have I killed so far? Um, plenty. Plenty? Um, yeah, ten minutes. Oh, ten minutes. Oh, <laughs> show's almost over. And I, I haven't even gotten to Steven Spielberg. Oh, my gosh. So here's the shocking but true story of Dave Koenig... And Steven Spielberg. All right. All right, so sit down, get ready for this. Oh, by the way, our, our, our uh, studio audience is here, uh, uh, creepy sea captain guy. So, um, uh, all right, so I'm sitting at home, minding my own business, just staring off into space, right. thinking my thoughts yeah. one day, and I get a call from my agent to go audition for uh, this film, The Post, mm-hmm. a, right. uh, and directed by uh, uh, Steven Spielberg. You know, well, that's exciting to get an audition for a Steven Spielberg film. So I go on the audition, and it's it's some fakakta thing where I'm a, a vice admiral of the Navy, and I'm on the, I'm being the testifying in court or something. And you know, I don't, I, you know, do I look like a vice admiral of the Navy? <laughs> no, I don't. And apparently, they didn't think so either. Oh so they God. they didn't cast, but they did cast me. They said, okay, get the guy who auditioned for the vice admiral of the Navy who looked nothing like a vice admiral, and we'll let him play a, a, a newspaper reporter, uh, which is you know perfect for me. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, a photographer. I was actually a photographer. For for the uh, uh, New York Times, you know, right. you know, so little part about that big, honestly, just a small part, uh, you know, one line, you know, whatever. But in a Steven Spielberg film, there are no small parts in a Steven Spielberg film, no. except for this one that I got cast in. So anyway, <laughs> so I show up. Uh, uh, now here's the scene. Now those, this is uh, those of you who have seen the movie The Post uh, already know the punchline of this story as I go into it. When I, when, you, no, they'll remember. Okay. Uh, those of you who haven't, uh, you, you, at least there'll be some suspense. The scene in the film that I was supposed to, be, that I was shooting, right. was this. Here we are. Uh, it was a recreation of Truman Capote's black and white ball. Okay. Now Truman Capote. The film is set in the 1960s. Truman Capote was uh, late 60s. He's he's flush with success from uh, 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 Breakfast at Tiffany's and In Cold Blood, and he throws himself a big party at the Plaza Hotel. But he can't throw it for himself. That would look tacky. Right. So he needs a guest of honor, and his guest of honor is Catherine Graham, right. the, uh, the, the publisher, your old boss. Yes. At the Washington Post. The Washington Post, yeah. Susan worked at the Washington Post out of college. She was a reporter there in the fashion uh, section. That's right. And she uh, had a, her first thing was to do an article about uh, clothing for dogs. That's right. And the headline was Dog Togs for Yuppie Puppies. Yep. Which I think is one of the most that brilliant, great. brilliant uh, pieces of journalism ever written. That was, I, that was a good story. Okay, so, uh, so Truman Capote throws this big party for, for Catherine Graham, right? And he invites the world. He and the, the literati and the glitterati and Frank Sinatra and, you know, Tennessee Williams and, you know, everybody was there. And this was a time when people didn't do this sort of thing. Now it's commonplace. Right. But this was a big, it was a huge event because all the biggest names in literature and, and journalism and uh, Hollywood and show business and Broadway, everybody was there. So Steven Spielberg is recreating that event. Because at the event is Catherine Graham, played by Meryl Streep, okay, and Ben Bradley, right, right her, her, uh, her editor, her editor. Uh, uh, played by Tom Hanks, okay, wow. and his wife, played by Sarah Paulson, and about 500 extras, right? A huge scene. Yeah. Hundreds of extras. They had a full, like a 16-piece orchestra in the ballroom, okay? The, the crane shots. I mean, they had a crane inside the ballroom. Wow. A crane, you know, like a, like a three-story crane to hold the camera. It was a tremendous, tremendous scene. And I was playing a photographer from the New York Times, right. and I run up to Tom Hanks, and I take his picture, and I say, can I have a picture? It's for the Times. That was, right. can I get a picture? Yeah, it's for the Times. You know, that was my oh, life. And, no, I did it like a 19, I, I, I did it like Leo Gorsi. <laughs> hey, can I get a picture? Yeah, it's for the Times. <laughs> eh. You know, it was very subtle acting. So, and, and, and Hanks is irritated because he's with the Washington Post. Right. And there was the big rivalry of the Post and the Times. So that's the scene. So you've got to picture this tremendous, huge scene. Right. Plaza okay. Hotel, right? 
pl- in the Plaza Hotel. Yeah. Okay, so here's the scene. So the, the, the first, it's a big shot. It's a big, long, luxurious, fantastic shot. Sarah Paulson and Tom Hanks entering into the outer foyer of the ballroom. The outer foyer of the ballroom is the size of a ballroom. Itself, and then they get into the entrance way of the ballroom. I come running up. I have my interaction with Tom Hanks. Hey, can I get a picture? It's for the Times. <laughs> Click, and uh, and he goes, ah, ah, it's for the Times because ah, he's irritated, right? And and then the cameras come and the, and the cameras come swooping in, and they're they're running after Tom Hanks. They're swooping in. It's like a tracking shot. And then I come swooping around, and then we have our moment. And then I swoop out. I'm supposed to swoop out, and then Tom Hanks and Sarah Paulson are supposed to enter into the ballroom, and the scene continues in the ballroom with hundreds of people. Wow! And it's a fantastic, elaborate shot. Yeah. Okay. So here's what happens. So <laughs> you think. I, you know, I would think, you know, Steven Spielberg, the great genius of film, is he got everything worked out in advance. No, no, he doesn't. He's making a lot of this stuff up as he goes along. There's, he leaves a lot of room for improvisation oh in his shots, you see. So he had a big picture of what he was going to do, but the specifics he hadn't really worked out. And, they're, and they're, they're rushing. They're rushing to get through the shot because everything's, this is a tight schedule. Oh, sure. This is not a big budget Steven Spielberg film. It's not E.T., it's not Close Encounters, it's it's, it's a newspaper film, and th- but this is a big, expensive scene. Yeah. Okay, so the, Russian, so the assistant director, yeah. who was an Australian guy, yeah. delightful man, and he, uh, uh, he comes running up to me. He says, okay, Dave, that's my... <laughs> can't I can't do a, an Australian accent. He says, oh, but I'll try. Okay, Dave, here's what you're going to do, mate. That wasn't bad. <laughs> that was good. I, uh, uh, put a, uh, something on the Barbie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so he said, what, uh, I want you to come in here, and then uh, Tom is going to come over here, and then you're going to run over here, and when you get here, see you lot, and then you run out that way. Uh, okay, you got it? Okay, great. And then he runs away. He runs away. And I'm standing there going, what happened? <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> There's hundreds of people around me, and Steven Spielberg is somewhere on this set, because he's off, you know, way uh, in the distance. Right. And I really, I honestly had no idea what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> and then this, and, here, and now they're shooting. And here we go. Take one. And Tom Hanks and Sarah Paulson come walking in, doop, 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 and they're talking to each other. I can't hear a word they're saying, but, you know, because there's a boom mic picking them up. I'm, right. I'm 20 feet away, and they're walking in. And they come walking in. And now here comes the camera crew, right? Right. And they're, and they're barreling right at me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, jeez. And i got to run. i got to get out of the way, or they're going to run me over. So I go running out of the way, and then I go running over here, and then I gotta figure out where my mark is, and I hit my mark, and I and I say the line, and and uh, <laughs> now what happened is the very first take. So that's what I was supposed to do, right? And I was supposed to ah, can I take a picture? So, so the very first take, Hanks and I'm supposed to, and, I, and Hanks has a line and, that he says to Sarah Paulson, whatever the line was. Right. You know, I hope they got shrimp. You know, that was the oh, line. Yeah. Uh, they better have shrimp. I want some shrimp. And, uh, and I, I'm supposed to come in at that point. So Hanks hits his mark, because he's a professional. He's done this once or twice before. He hits his mark, and he says his line, but I can't hear him. Because he's not, a, he's not doing big Dave Koenig sticky. <laughs> hey, can I get a picture? You know, like... like um, Projecting to the back row. You know, he's a movie actor. So, yeah, I, hope they have I can't hear him. So I don't know what to do. I don't know, if I, I don't know when to come in. So I don't come in. So I go, cut, cut, Dave. What, can you? I said, well, I couldn't hear him. I, I couldn't hear my, my cue. And Hanks hears me say that, and he kind of rolls his eyes a little bit. Right. And goes, ah, all right, all right. So the next story, uh, the next uh, uh, line, he, he says it louder. And then, and, and uh, so this goes on, right? <laughs> so finally, we get to the, so we get to one point, uh, I come, I, I finally get it right. And, oh, at one point, Steven Spielberg, uh, I was directed by Steven Spielberg. Oh, my gosh. And Steven Spielberg came down from, from the mountaintop yeah. and gave me direction. What did he say? He said, uh, you missed your mark. Oh. And I went, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'll do that. <laughs> so then the next take, uh, I come swooping. Now I can hear uh, Tom. I come swooping. Tom, yeah. we're buddies. <laughs> Tommy. I call him Tommy. Yeah. So uh, I come swooping in, and uh, uh, I say my line, boom, and then I'm supposed to turn away, you see, and then move out of the way so the camera can come in so that Tom Hanks can go into the ballroom and boom, boom, boom. And I move in the wrong direction, and I walk right into the camera. <laughs> and the cameraman, and 
there's thousands of people on this set. It's a huge, huge scene. The cameraman yells cut. Oh my God. The cameraman goes, whoa, wait, whoa, stop, whoa. And then everyone goes, what? What happened? What? And Steven Spielberg comes running down from the mountain because oh, he's in a mountain somewhere. And he comes running down and he goes, what happened? What happened? And Tom Hanks is going, what? What happened? What happened? <laughs> And I know what happened. It's me. I, I walked into the camera, you know. And I'm the schmuck, so I got to stand. I, I, I got to go to Tom Hanks. I go. Ah, I'm sorry. It was me. I, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, I screwed up. I, 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 I moved in the wrong direction. You know? And Hanks, to his credit, uh, says, "Get off the set." No, Hanks, to his credit, <laughs> Hanks, to his credit, says, "Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah, we're just we're all making a movie here. You're making a movie. I'm making a movie. Sarah, you're making a movie. We're all making the same movie. Very nice. He's trying to make me feel better." So uh, uh, finally, I, we get it done. Yeah. I, I've missed my mark. I run into the, I've walked into the camera. I've screwed it. You ever see? There's a Jerry Lewis movie where they do a great scene. It's like the Errand Boy, where they do a scene on the on the Paramount lot, where it's this big scene with thousands of people, and it, Jerry's an extra, and he's way off in the distance, and then you pick up slowly. He's staring right into the camera, <laughs> and he ruins the whole shot. That's me. That's me on the set of the. So I leave. Yeah. Right. That's the end of the day. I'm gone. Right. And now I'm convinced, I screwed up. I screwed up on a Steven Spielberg film. <laughs> you know, I'll never work again in this or any business. I'm a failure at life. And uh, I get a call, and I was wrapped. I was done. That was it. That was my entire part. I get a call, and uh, it's, it's the Australian guy. <laughs> the assistant director. He goes, hi, Dave. Dave. Dave, he says. Good day. Good day, Dave. <laughs> Thank you. Good day, Doc. Good day, good day, mate. He says, I know you, I know you were wrapped. Yeah. Right? How's that? I know you were wrapped, but uh, we were wondering, could you come back? We got some more stuff for you to do. I said, whoa. <laughs> I said, what happened to your Australian accent? <laughs> so apparently they had decided they, they liked what I did, and they wanted to. They wanted. decided? Well, I guess Steven Spielberg. That's Steven right. Spielberg liked what I did. So... <laughs> They had me come back. Now, they had me come back a couple of days later, so I got paid for the, the, the second day where I didn't work at all. So all of a sudden, a one-day shoot turned into a three-day shoot on a Steven Spielberg movie. Wow. So I go back, and this, get this. Would you get this? Would you get what they had me doing? Oh, my gosh. They had, not only did they have hundreds of people, not only did they have a 16-piece orchestra and a crane shot, and, you know, every star in the film was in this scene. I mean, I, Meryl Streep and Tom Hanks, and I, the, the whole gang were in this scene. Right. Because uh, it was setting up the whole film. It was the big setup for the whole movie. They had CGI celebrities. Right. They had Frank Sinatra, and the, uh, guy, and the guy was like the same body. It was like a, just a guy, but he had the same body type and fa facial shape as Sinatra. And they had CGI dots on him because oh they were going to later on put in Frank Sinatra's face on his head. Right. So they had Frank Sinatra... Uh, Henry Fonda, uh -huh. uh, Andy Warhol, right. Gregory, uh, Peck. Gregory Peck, I think was you know they, uh, 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 all these celebrities, all these 1960s celebrities, and they wanted me as the photographer to be the guy ad libbing and yelling at them as they came in. That's so cool. So they're entering, so they got they're entering into the party, and there's me going, hey friend, and they said just ad lib, just you know you're good, do whatever you want. <laughs> so Steven Spielberg is giving me carte blanche to ad lib in his film. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, then. All righty. So, so I'm going, hey, Frank, Frank, over here. Hey, Frank, where's Mia? You know, clever, right. clever stuff like good. that. Uh, Lauren, ah, they had Lauren Bacall. Right. Lauren Bacall. Right. So I, me, I'm going, hey, Betty, Betty, over here. I want to take a picture of you, Betty. So the, the, then they stop. They st the next take, the, the, uh, the guy comes over, the Australian guy. He says, oh, uh, he says I, Mike, Dave, that's, uh, not, uh, that's Lauren Bacall. That's Lauren. <laughs> I said, no, no, it's not Lauren. It's Betty. Everyone called her Betty. That That's was her name. Right. But he went, oh, good. <laughs> so I was educating them. Oh my so now I'm directing the picture. <laughs> now it's my picture, That's Dave Garner. Right. Oh, my gosh. So, and then they brought me over, and I thought I had screwed up badly, right. but I hadn't. And they brought me, me back in, and I did all this good stuff. And then they brought me um, over to uh, Spielberg yes. at the end of the day and, uh, and, uh, and uh, to say goodbye. And... <laughs> Oh, we're getting for close. <laughs> 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 so, uh, and uh, and he said, and, you know, and he, he said, he was, so he, nice, he was very right? nice. He was very nice. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, tremendous to. Uh, I have worked with a few celebrities in my day, and I have met several, and you know, you know, 
you know, I've been in show business a long time. I've done a few things. I've worked with a few people. Right. And, and, and this is the only time I ever got, you know. Reclaimed. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Spielberg, right? Well, what he's done, for, listen, what he's done for America, for the Jewish people. Yeah. Is tremendous. All right, so that's my no Steve. Slouch. No slouch that Steven Spielberg. But then he cut me out of the. Then he cut the whole scene out. He cut the whole scene out because Steven Spielberg knows nothing, and I mean nothing about making films. Oh my God. He's a hack. No. He cut my scene out. Oh. I didn't make dime one from that picture. Oh my God. Not a nickel in residuals. Oh, what a story. But what a story. God bless Steven Spielberg. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's my story. What time is it now? How much time have we it's, done? It's, 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 it's Wednesday yeah. already. I did 48 hours today. Uh, God bless you all. Stay safe. Uh, uh, tune in tomorrow. Uh, we'll do another show just like this one, only slightly different. Maybe I'll tell another story. And then tune in Saturday for my big stand-up comedy special on Facebook Live this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Our benefit for healthresearch.org, the official New York State uh, 501c3 that helps out uh, with the expenses for the health workers uh, working overtime. All right, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in. You guys are great, uh, and be well, and uh, that's it, right? Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody, is the way we end this show. (laughs) Thank you.